Right, we are back. Today, we're going to be getting some feather effects with mica powder. I've seen this done a, a, um, a few times, but not in the way that I'm going to show you today. Now, I'm not going to stop using alcohol inks. You know, that's never going to happen. Uh, I wouldn't discourage people from using them either. But just remember, like I've said in the community tab post, it's art. Treat it like art. Now, for this, what I'm showing you today, I've had a, a few attempts. Here's one. I didn't really get that feathering effect. It's still really nice. Um, here was a heart. But it didn't really sink as much as I'd liked. Um, I did a, an, another. In, this was from that same batch. But what I did with this one is I added the sea deeper to the back afterwards, just as an experiment. So I'm going to show you the, the way that I did another test yesterday. And we got that effect, but I stirred too early. So when you stir a bit later, it will pull those colours and create more feathering. I've got a bit of a blemish on this mould, but I'm still going to use it. So I'm going to show you how to get light fast feather effects with mica powders. And the difference that the difference with this um, tutorial is that I'm going to be using white pigment paste as my base mixed with resin. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. And these are the mica powders from Let's Resin. There is so much choice in this box. You could use mica powders that you've already got, but if you want a large array of different colors, I'd really recommend getting this set. Um, again, everything I use is in the description box below. You would also need some isopropyl. This is 99.9%. Just play around with what you've got. If you've got a different percentage alcohol, try it. You might need to add a little bit more. It's, it's going to be very similar to my collaboration videos with Lunar Designs where we've got the feathering with pigment pastes. It's very, very similar. Um, but again, you might have different resin. You might have different micas. You might have a different pigment paste. Just play around. Don't go wasting a whole batch of of resin um, just mix up small amounts and give it a try and see what you get and work from there basically if it doesn't sink enough like I've learnt add more white paste if the colour isn't right and it's not as strong as you'd like add more mica which is what I did in this batch to get a stronger colour now you can go a bit over the top and you can get blobs and get some spores as well but it is just playing around with what you've got so I'm gonna start mixing and we'll start pouring right so we are of course using the collab resin and it comes with lots of these handy mixing cups inside I don't know how many probably around 20 um, but I'm not 100% sure, but it does come with a lot of the mixing cups in. Uh, and don't do what I do. What I did <laughs> is I put the wrong cap on the wrong bottles yesterday, and I just had a really, really lengthy fight with um, Part B trying to get the cap off. I ended up having to uh, cut the bottle. <laughs> so we've got our resin pretty mixed up. And now I'm not going to show you each one of these. I'll just show you how I mix up one and then... You know, I, I'm doing the same on all the colours that I decide to pick. So, before I start pouring, I'm going to spray my mould. Because I keep I keep forgetting to use this. And my mould is starting to whiten and lose its shine. It's a bit late, but I keep forgetting to spray my moulds. And just make sure there's no debris left in there. Right, so now I'm going to pick up my colours. Right, so these are the colours I've picked. 
I'll go through them two by two. Crimson, fuchsia, yellow and orchid. I might not use them all, we'll see how we go. A dark blue, long green. And I'm gonna try the gold. I'm not sure how this is gonna work with the white as a base. It might not look as gold, it might just go like a, a strange yellow or orange, but we'll find out. So I'm gonna start off by pouring into my cups. You really don't need much. Now I'm not gonna give you all the measurements because I I, I haven't, I suppose I could weigh it for you, um, just as a, a guide. Caught a drip in my hand. Let's get my scales and weigh it for you. So minus the cup weight, there's seven grams of resin in there. And I'm not gonna measure all of these out because I, I don't. you don't really need to. Um, it's just getting the balance right uh, through playing um, with this method yourself, really. Right, all my resin is poured out, ready to go. Uh, before I carry on, massive shout out to my channel members. Uh, thank you for all the support. Thank you to those who bought me a coffee or sent me a super thanks. Again, those links um, are in my video description. And with the Armour Art, there's a 20% discount code also in the description, which is good. So what we need to do now, this can be a bit time consuming, but I'm just gonna use this um, cuticle tool as a dipping stick. And we're just gonna get all of our mixing cups thoroughly mixed with our white. And again, I'm only gonna show you this in one cup. And this really is where you need to kind of test Again, I'm not going with any measurements. I'm just going straight in. I might have some accidents on this run, but it's what it's all about. I'm not fussed about the bubbles either. So we just wanna get all of our cups ready with the base white. And like I said, this white pigment will cause the effect that we need in the feathering. Too little you're not gonna get the effect too much. You're gonna get the blobbing. It all is about, it, it's all about experimenting with what you have and getting that balance right. The same as pigment pastes. Once you've got it, you, you kind of know, but this is new to me. <laughs> So I could I could go wrong. Now you can see I've still got some white pigment on the end of that tool. So I'm going to take that straight into the next one. But like I said, I'm going to skip all this part now. Because you can see what I'm doing. And I'll see you for the mica stage. Right, now just to give you an example of how long this stuff lasts. I've had this well over a year. And I've still got a good half a bottle. And I use this for my flower blooms. Uh, for my pigment paste videos that I've done it really does go a, a very long way I mean just from that one dip I managed to do five cups so it's really worth getting right so now what we need to do again I'm only going to show you the one cup this is we're going to get our mica powder and we're just gonna put a good amount in Again, you can't go too much, so I might get some blob in with this one, but I'll put less in the others maybe. So the kind of the way this works is that the white pigment gives us the sinking, and the alcohol kind of balances it out and keeps the mica and pigment afloat. So it's kind of like a seesaw. I think I might have gone a bit over the top of this one. I think this is gonna sink. But we're gonna carry on. I'm gonna mix up all my other colors and then I'll show you the important part. Just thought I'd show you the gold. It's gone like a, a caramel color. Now again, I've said, you know, these won't fade in the sun, but general rule of thumb, with any piece of resin, regardless of what you're sticking in it, is keep out of direct sunlight doesn't matter what you're putting in because many resin 
many resins. <laughs> um, will can yellow over time and dull. So you might have a risk with alcohol ink fading, which I'm working on. I'm getting closer to a, a video for you. It might be up before this one. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, the general rule is don't put any kind of resin in the sun. I've even read a story where somebody had a fire start due to um, the sun ray reflecting through a pyramid that they had. Luckily, they were in at the time. But yeah, like I said, you know, you shouldn't really put your resin in the sun. Right, I'm going to crack on. Right, so in this is the alcohol. What we need to do, this is really important, similar to when you're using pigment paste, is that we need to work with one colour at a time. Use it in our resin. If we've got leftovers, we can pour it into another mould. Um, and then we move on to adding the alcohol to the next colour and then dropping those and so on. Because what will happen is if you add all your alcohol now and let them, by the time you've got to the last one, most of the alcohol would have evaporated from the first cup. So it's really important to work with each colour as you go. Now, I've realised that I've probably got a little bit too much resin in my cups I know seven grams I said but the issue we're gonna have is that if we've got too much we're gonna end up adding a lot more alcohol to the resin before it works so I'm gonna I've got just a butterfly mold up here you might see me kind of blobbing bits of color into it as I go it's because I don't want to waste the alcohol And there we go. So I'm probably left with about two or three grams, I reckon. Now, I'm not counting the drops. There's no point. It's, I've got some tester pieces here, but you'll see me just drizzle the alcohol into the cup. And then we really need to stir. Now, what I found with this test yesterday is that you're almost there if you can lift the tool out and it drips instead of leaves leaving a strand of resin like this if it drips off then it's it's close to ready if that makes sense and i'll show you another thing that you can look for to know when it's ready when we put it into the resin it will form a cute little dimple in the middle of the drop i have found Again, this may differ depending on what you're using. Like I said, you know, if I hadn't poured out that excess resin, this would have taken a lot more alcohol content. Again, I'm only going to show you the one cup mixing. I'll just pause the video. I'll show you dropping into the resin, but I'll pause the video when I'm doing this stuff with each colour. So that's dripping off now. So let's take you down. We've got our two tester pieces. I'll try and zoom in as well. And we're just gonna drop one of the colors into the resin and then just watch it for a couple of minutes. And you can see that small little dimple in the back. Now we don't want this to sink, but we don't want it to spread out too fast, which if you add too much alcohol, it's going to spread out too fast, which means that the white pigment's not going to work. So we're just going to let that sit. We want it to spread a little bit over time. So I'm going to pause the video for a minute or so. Right, I haven't noticed if it's spread, but you might have seen it where I paused and unpaused the video. But I've added another couple of drops of alcohol just to see if there's a difference when I drop the next one. There probably won't be. But I can see the top one has spread a bit. So we're going to continue with what we've got. And we're going to keep coming back to those testers. And I'm not going to do this neatly. I'm just going to blob my colour in. Wherever I want. Good. 
help if you could see. And I might need to add a couple more drops as I go. So I've just added about three or four more drops of alcohol. Just like I said, because that evaporation process depends on the temperature as well, the environment you're working in, the alcohol can evaporate fairly quickly. Again, it helps if you can see what I'm doing. It's because I'm not zoom. I've zoomed in quite a bit. I'm not used to this. I'm not used to the zoom. And like I said, you've got excess left over, leave it aside, the alcohol will evaporate and we can pour that into our butterfly. I did one yesterday with excess I had left and it has cured solid. Right, I'm going to move on to another colour. Right, so again I've put enough in there so that it just drips off, but we're going to do that tester and just see, we've got that dimple again already, right in the centre, and that will kind of tell us, you can see that how the others have already spread, you know, I haven't spread too much, it's, to me, it looks perfect. So again, I'm happy with this, I'm going to add a couple more drips actually. And again, it all is just doing your own tests and just seeing the correct ratio for what you're using. There are many factors involved. But once you've got it and you know what you're looking at or looking for, it should be like riding a bike, he says. <laughs> But I might make some mistakes. I've only done it a couple of times, as I've said. I'm fully expecting some mistakes. With, I'm not gonna get the ratios correct on every single color that I'm mixing and blending. I'm gonna move over to the other mold because I haven't put anything in that. I'm gonna try and mix it up a little bit so we've got some different results. You don't wanna blob it you know, too much in one spot either because that could potentially sink we don't want that sinking I just I've got seven colors so I want to kind of mix things up a little bit so that we've got some different results like I said being very careful with my camera arm because <laughs> I broke it and it's really loose at the moment I temporarily fixed it with some UV like I said in my last video but I need to order a new one You can see those really bright dimples in the centers. Going by yesterday's experiments, that's that's a good thing. So now we've got the gold, which is more like a, <laughs> a caramel color. And we've got another test piece in the site on the other side here. So we're going to blob into that as well, just so we've got something else to demold. Maybe just try and put the gold in the middles. If you give this a try and you're on YouTube, by all means drop me a tag. I'd love to see some more results. Like I said, I haven't seen this done, but if somebody has done it with this method, um, and I've missed the video, I did have a look through YouTube. I tend not to watch YouTube videos, unless I really have to. Um, but if I have missed any tutorial on it, I'm sorry. I would have given you a shout out. I've added just a few more drops of alcohol into this. I'm 
trying not to make it a, a, a video that's you know too long sorry <laughs> after over a year you'd think my filming skills would be much better by now but they're still as bad as the day i started but at least i'm not shaking as much as i used to i often go back to that first video that i put up and just remind myself of how nervous i was and how shaking you know i was trembling but you guys have shown such amazing support and kept me going you killed all my nerves <laughs> and it's just fun now it's really good fun well again any excess i've got left at the end i will use in the butterfly so now we need to test our green i think it's still a little bit too thick add a little bit more Uh, anyone asking about the butterfly, where the mould is from, um, it's from somebody, one of my resin friends on TikTok, Jade is Art. Um, she sent me that alongside a, a cute turtle mould. Just so you know, jadeisart.com if you do want it, when you see the results. Right, what one should I put green in? I think I'm only going to go with like a... And it, like, the good thing as well with this is that if you touch another colour with alcohol inks, they will blend together and, and kind of they can muddy, etc. You haven't really got that issue with micas or pigment pastes. I think maybe a couple over here with a green. Yeah, they won't really blend together like alcohol inks do. I think maybe one of these hearts over here needs some green. Just like that. Now you might find as well that your resin, because it's been sitting there, is getting thicker. Um, it doesn't matter, because once we add the alcohol and stir it up, it's gonna loosen again. It will look like it curdles to begin with, but it will it will re-loosen so you can you can carry on using it. So don't panic if your resin is starting to get thick. Now for the blue. Yeah, just a few more drips. I think that's okay. Feel free to also share this video with any of your resin friends. It will help. And again, if you haven't hit that sub button down there for me, or you're not signed into YouTube, and that's the reason why you're not hitting that sub button, please help my channel by subbing, giving the video a thumbs up, and dropping a comment, because it all helps with the strange algor algorithms that the world is uh, controlled by nowadays. I think I might have added a bit too much alcohol to this blue. But like I said, I don't expect every single one to be perfect. But you can just see how they've spread, which is really good. lock my focus as well I'm left with two more colors 
and you can you can see the lacing that's happening as well on the back very similar to what happens with the pigment pastes once they've been sitting in the resin for a little while you get like that lacing pattern which is a positive sign because it, it shows that the white is beginning to push down into the resin and you could do this on a bigger scale right next color right, now with our yellow sorry if this is getting boring and repetitive it's very similar to the gold that we've used I'm just checking to I think I need a few more drips of alcohol in this before I can start dropping Let's do it. Again, thanks to everyone who's gone out and bought the Collab Resin. Like I said in my last video, it is also now available in the UK. And the good thing about the, the, the resin also is that, although I say keep out of direct sunlight, it does have three times UV protection, unlike many other brands, which is good. Just slows down any of that fading. What have I got left? One more color. I might need a little bit more alcohol. See that lacing in that top part there? I just really hope that this uh, this works and that I've remembered my rough mixes from yesterday's test. Right, I haven't really got much room left, but I've got one more colour. I mean, you, you, you could potentially, um, I haven't tested it, but you could potentially skip out the white pigment, mix the mica with the resin and the alcohol, and then use the CD Pro over the top. Potentially. It's something else that you can play around with. Like I showed you, I did use CD Pro on the back of one of the pieces, but that also contained the white. But... It's telling me it will work because the other pieces from the same batch didn't really give us any feathering. I mean, this was the one that was next to it. It's got some, like a deeper area there, but there's a massive difference. And I added the CD Pro over the top of this and obviously white sinker won't fade. So it's still fade proof. But we might we might try it on a couple of these, one or two of these. We might do it in one of the tester ones, just to see as an example. But obviously I've I've mixed white pigment into these already. So I can't see why it wouldn't work uh, the way that I said with just the sinker. I really can't see it not working. The issue that you're going to have potentially though is that the, the alcohol content could keep the sea deeper afloat if you understand what I mean. So it doesn't really give the effect. Right, let's try this last colour. I'd say that's good to go. I haven't really got, like I said, much room. And this is very similar to the other colour that's already in there anyway. So I'm not overly fast. There's a little bit of a difference, but not much.
see this round run in the center has got too much resin in it's kind of doming at the back yeah I think with my yellow it's spread a little bit too much maybe but we won't know until the flip side right I think we're um, we're done so we're gonna grab our CD per just as an experiment like I said just on one of the test pieces give it a good shake and then we're gonna come back I know it's been quite a, a, a period of time since I began so the resin is starting to almost get to stirring stage now but I want to wait for it to thicken up I'm just dripping that over the back. We might as well do the other test piece as well. And just see what we get. Right, I'll see you for stirring stage. Right, let's see if we're at stirring stage. And due to the, the alcohol content, the, the surface of the resin probably... Um, It'll take a little bit longer to get to the stirring stage. Normally I do it after one hour, don't I? But we're gonna I think what I'll do is I'll stir this side on camera and then I'll come back and I'll I'll tell you when it comes to demolding how long I, I waited for the other side. Just as a, a kind of a test. Uh, mind you, it's it's quite yeah, no, we're just gonna do them all. It is quite thick. Yeah, that's good. That is good. I'll just go with a few different ways of stirring our resin. Mix things up a little bit. That's what we want, that stringy consistency. I just hope it's feathered. <laughs> um, let's see if we go a bit deeper and get maybe a ribbon. Really stringy. And hopefully by pushing the colours through each other, if we haven't got feather room with one colour, hopefully it will be with the others. I, I, I make sense to myself sometimes. <laughs> Just wondering what they'd look like with a black background now. Let's move that one aside. Oh no, we've got the two test pieces, haven't we? Now we can move that side. Lock my focus. I don't know whether to play around with a black background or keep them as they are now. I 
I don't know. And it would make sense if I'd do a black background to do it with black mica. I mean, if I do, I might not film that bit. I might just do one or two. Just mix up a small amount of resin. Just see what it looks like. And there we go, we're all stirred. And I will see you for the exciting part. Let me see if we've got the results. <laughs> see you soon. Right, we're back. I was a very naughty, uh, naughty person last night. <laughs> I had a sneak peek and I've learnt my lesson because I damaged it in the process. In the front, you can see I've rippled it where I've pushed it out of the mould. Because I wanted the evening to kind of work out where I went wrong, if it did go wrong. But then, I gave up after peeking at this one. But you can see the effect in the corner of this one. But it's not really there over the rest of the piece. So that leads me to believe that I either didn't add enough white, or... I added too much alcohol but we're gonna we'll do this side first we're gonna demold them anyway hopefully we've got some good ones like I said I wasn't expecting perfect results here you can see some of the effect there yeah I wasn't expecting the results in every single piece so hopefully we've got one or two and you can see that I've done some backgrounds with some black mica. Hopefully we've got one or two at least. So we've got a spore of white there. Again, it's not really there apart from in that pink color. Ooh. there in the gold just slightly you can see it and again in the pink but it's a start guys once I've cracked it there will be no going back oh it's there in the green just slightly It's a very dull mould, this one. It's a shame it's so close. <laughs> you can see the way the, the colours kind of stand on their own. Must have been something in my mould that I didn't clean out. Right, let's see if we've got any on the other side. I think these two would have worked because we added the white single afterwards. But let's see. Got it up there. Down here. I'd like to have seen more, like I showed you with the 
the other piece I made. It's kind of the texture is there across all the colours. That one's a bit better. We had a bubble there. Couple of tiny bubbles in there. It goes to show you, you can get this with mica powders and the pigment paste. It's just cracking that ratio. And this one looked promising from the back because of the, the lacing. You can see some of it. I mean, it's a good start anyway. Oh no, two bubbles. <laughs> Right, let's see the ones that we added to CD for two. I'm expecting better results. There you go. So maybe that is the key then. If I'd have done that all over. And it's still light fast, even with the sinker white, it won't fade. And that really is a nice piece. Wish I'd done more in the others as well. That is super cool. Love that. So it gives you something to play with anyway, whether you use the pigment, the white pigment or the sinker white alcohol ink. That really has a really nice texture and the colours are there and again that's going to be light fast but like I said before I'm not giving up on alcohol inks just because they they can fade in the sun but brands are very important and I am testing with alcohol inks to give you a better longer lasting solution but as for now here's an alternative that you could try it gets a great results. Again, guys, give the video a thumbs up for me. Drop me a comment. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, it's just down there. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.